uh, I Rahul Kumar from SPS Department, Amity School of Physical Education and Sports Sciences. I would like to invite one and all here in this international webinar, a psychological analysis uh, of a sports person post COVID effect. We have a guest speaker with us, Ms. Sanjana Kiran from Singapore and Mr. Ashish Bhardwaj who is a broadcaster and a sports commentator. So I would like to call for a welcome address our Dean Faculty of Education and Amity uh, University Uttar Pradesh and Director of SPS Department, Professor Kalpana Sharma, ma'am. Professor Kalpana Sharma, ma'am, Dean Faculty of Education, Amity University Uttar Pradesh. She is also serving as a Director SPS at the University. Her, her credibility lies in the fact that she has worked for the Faculty of Education promoting the academics in the NCTE recognized courses. Designing the curriculum framework integrated the Education 4.0 requirements in the education industry. She leads from the front for the quality research program at the Faculty of Education, academically, various workshops, symposia, conferences, etc. Have been conducted at the Faculty for enriching the experience of the learners, listeners, a passionate professional for always believing in expansion and collaboration, has been instrumental in nurturing MAUs with reputed organizers. Being member on the curricular committee for NCTE, CBSE, KVS, and MHRD has contributed in the various curricular enrichment as well as fitness assessment program, development as expert. She has published five books and many research paper in national and international journal. She has to her credit seven MPhil and 10 PhD award. Welcome ma'am, over to you ma'am. Thank you Rahul. I think uh, that was a very quick <laughs> intro for my also. And uh, first of all, I really, really wish and to express my gratitude and welcome our uh, speakers of the day, uh, Sanjana Madam from Singapore, Youth Thank Olympic you. Committee and uh, Ashish uh, Bhardwaj, Thank you. who is known for long, but uh, I think I would like to tell you all a brief about uh, our speakers and the theme of the conference or the theme of the international webinar. As Rahul just mentioned that we are talking about a psychological analysis of sports performance post COVID. The whole idea of this conference came from a very a small bubble which was coming in our mind time and again that uh, it's important to understand the perspectives we are taking perspectives or thinking perspectives from everybody's end you talk a conversation and you will find that everybody needs some kind of a psychological help our athletes also require that kind of a psychological uh, assistance i will say a progression in their performance is required. They need to go back to the field. And hence, we thought that this will be a very befitting title for our international webinar, where we have Madam Sanjana Kiran with us, who is an expert in this area, who is handling athletes, and who has a vast experience in this. When you will learn about her introduction, you will know how experienced she is in handling the athletes. And just before being live, when we were interacting, I was just listening to her stories, which, we were, which she was sharing, how beautifully they have engaged the athletes. Keeping these difficult norms of the Singapore uh, com community, how to engage people is what you will listen. And I'm sure her talk will be very, very enriching to each one of you. Since all of us, all our listeners are from the physical education and sports field, they are either managers, they are either administrators, or they are athletes, or they are some budding athletes. So we have a diverse uh, profile of people who are our listeners also. So I'm sure, uh, Madam Kiran, when you will be uh, sharing your thoughts with all of us, it will be very, very interesting for all of us. Uh, coming to Ashish, uh, Ashish Bhardwaj, I'm sure uh, many of the professionals in India know you today because 
of the fact that you have taken taken things in the challenging time bringing technology to the spot i think it has been a very gradual shift from a media person to a technology person to a sports person to a psychologist to in to interacting with athletes i think we have seen you growing also on one hand and we have seen you commanding now on the sports technology part so ashish it's been good it's been a good journey for you and it's been a good journey to witness as a senior for you and definitely uh being a professional we are, we share our professionals and hence i can say with a complete uh, authenticity here that yes ashish is one person who has tried to make the difference for the physical education pro professionals so all the listeners who are listening today the lecture all the seniors who are listening today ashish i must tell you psychology is just 100th of ashish Ashish has got lot of potential to talk to you, and he can talk hours with us. And hence, uh, please be open to technology questions. Please be open to any sports question. Please be open to any physical education and psychology and technology questions, because we have a diverse expertise who are here with you to share their thoughts to you. And I hope uh, that you will enjoy listening to each word which they say. And don't shy off. Please do. uh put your questions in the chat box so that you get the maximum benefit of this international webinar today with these words i welcome uh, madam sanjana kiran and i welcome ashish bhardwaj ji both of you to our amity and uh, definitely this webinar will be very well taken by the listeners and uh, i would suggest that you, i give most of my time to both of the speakers rather than speaking too much here and we encourage more and more questions or a dialogue later on thank you very much and welcome uh, thank you so much ma'am for your kind words before hand over the mic to sanjana kiran ma'am i would like to uh, take an opportunity to introduce her uh, miss sanjana kiran is a sports psychology program developer a sports science coordinator for singapore youth olympic games 2020 she has high performance sports psychologists to elite athletes and elite coaches in preparation for major games and international competitions a sports psychology consultant services to athlete and coaches including peak performance mental skills training psychological skills training and mindfulness mental toughness resilience performance profiling etc through individual consultants and workshops critical moment analysis and high performance solutions during high priority competitions trainer for high performance courses and sports coaching courses performance psychologist corporate trainer to multinational corpor uh, corporations entrepreneurs medical students and performing artists consultant service includes executive counseling related to the leadership team management for senior management personnel and individual consultations related to performance psychology for organizational personnel individual consultations related to the performance psychology for organizational personnel and need based perform performance psychology workshops for organizational persons also she has corporate training in the areas of internal uh, motivation self efficiency arousal regulation leadership team cohesion mental health health awareness personality awareness psychological safety emotional intelligence mindfulness etc clinical psychology services for crisis management crit critical incident support and retrenchment counseling teaching faculty as far as we are talking about uh, her teaching ability so she has teaching uh, teaching faculty to universities and polytechnics in the area of sports psychology exercise psychology health psychology organizational psychology cognitive psychology developmental psychology etc she has program course content developer for face to face and online and off campus learning also apart from that she is founder and director of a game a sports psychology performance psychology and they were that aims to facilitate best performance and elevate the individuals to attain peak performance welcome ma'am uh, i would like to invite you for our main session 
on the topic of uh, a psychological analysis of a sports person a post covid scenario over to you ma'am thank you thank you rahul can you hear me yes ma'am you didn't have to say all of that but just one correction perhaps there was a, a typo in what i sent i am not the coordinator for yog 2020 that was in 2010 now i work with olympians of seven different nations and uh, i've moved on from the youth side so but that was a great experience singapore had hosted the inaugural yog 2020 2010 and i learned a lot from it so thank you so do you want me to share my screen is that all right if i shared my screen with you yeah please go ahead thank you all right i i hope to do justice to the time given to me with the time team given to me in you know sharing my experiences in what i have understood as a psychological analysis of sports performance especially you know a post covid scenario so when our athletes and you know uh, all of these whether they are olympians or not are back in the game uh, what can be expected so whatever i am speaking is based on my experience working with athletes for two decades and anything i speak related to covid situation is uh, related to the olympians i work with um their experiences are no different from most of us but some have, of them have been very lucky to escape the covid scenario so um here are my few notes on my experiences with this group so i would like to highlight three points uh what is psychology of performance i think it's important to understand that before we understand the impact of covid on psychology of performance so first i would be talking about what is psychology of performance and then i would be talking about what is the impact of covid on the psychology of performance when the sporting life resumes in a new normal hopefully post covid earlier i was sharing with the professor kalpana that uh, as much as singapore has been very careful with covid uh, we are getting ready to perhaps have a fuller normal by the end of next year rather than end of uh, new year with all the new infections happening and then third and most important i think um, the question is can the probable negative impact of covid on a person's psychology of performance can that be prevented now there are some things we can do now such that we can if not prevent reduce the negative impact of covid on our athletes uh, you know performance at a psychological level so just to get the conversation started uh, what is psychology of sport performance i want to believe most of us know but just a, a little you know a review of what we know now uh, the aim of any uh, you know athlete is to attain their peak performance to be their best at whatever competition they take part in it could be a school competition it could be a club competition it could be at any level it doesn't have to be necessarily an olympics for that matter so each of these athletes are aiming to be their best you know to be their personal best and to attain their own peak performance but in order to need, uh, reach that peak performance a mental resilience is needed they need to be mentally strong they need to have the mental skills that are required to manage the psychological demands of that situation and these don't come over overnight these can't be had just like that these need to be, have been practiced over a period of time so what are some of the you know aspects of psychology that a mental resilience entails now some of them which are more important than the rest are you know we look at stress anxiety arousal so are athletes able to manage over arousal for example are the athletes if an athlete is managed able to manage over arousal or under arousal then we can safely say this athlete is mental resilient but that's not enough is the athlete self confidence now we all know self confidence is the person's self belief that they can carry out any activity or performance to the best of their ability 
Now, their ability might not be the best there is in the competition, but self-confidence comes from believing that I can give my best in the situation that is. So that is a very important aspect too. You could be an athlete who can manage your anxiety well, but you're not, if you're not very confident, then there's only so much you can do. And we all know that the self-confidence of a person depends on their self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is their own belief in their potential, whether they believe they have what it takes. Now, the entire world, including the coach, might have faith in the athlete, might believe in their abilities. But if the athletes don't believe in their own abilities, then there's only so much that will happen because ultimately, the coach or the world can't compete for the athlete. The athlete has to compete themselves. So that's an important aspect too. Being able to focus, concentrate, attend to the task at hand. Now, the higher the competition gets, the more and more distractions there are. That can impact your self-confidence, that can impact your anxiety levels. It could be more, it could be less. Now, the assumption is if an athlete has reached an Olympic level, they should have this figured. But then with every, like I said, with every competition, as higher it goes, the stakes becomes much more higher, which also means the athlete has really worked, worked hard for a very long period of time to get to where they are. So a lot is at stake. It doesn't necessarily have to be expectation of people who are important to them. It doesn't have to be the expectation of the country who is funding them. Their own expectations can become a lot to handle. So through all this, being able to focus and concentrate on the task at hand can be tough. Earlier, I was uh, sharing with Professor Kalpana that um, I'm working with some athletes who are who will be in the third Olympics now. They've already had two podium finishes in you know, the other Olympics, the previous Olympics, the editions of 2016 and you know, 2012. And this is your third. So people might assume that it should be just like that for them to make it happen because they've been there, they've done that. But they know with experience that every competition situation brings with it a lot of newer challenges newer concerns and that can take away their focus and con concentration if they do not prepare for it well. Motivational levels. Now, now when is a person motivated? A person is motivated when they have the drive, the passion, where they're willing to put in that effort if there is some meaning to what they're doing. Now if athletes have reached an Olympic stage or a national stage or you know a state level stage, obviously they might be very passionate about it. But that is not enough for motivation. The passion must meet the opportunity and the situation and the circumstances. Only then magic happens. So when the passion does not, uh, or, or rather the situation or the opportunity does not match up to the passion, the motivation can drop. So having optimal levels of motivation, staying motivated is accounts to mental resilience. Being able to perform consistently. Now having a win just like that could be out of fluke, could just that the athlete turned lucky that time. But that is not what you can depend on. So you need certain psychological skills that allow you to stay consistent in performance. For example, do you have like a pre-routine, a pre-performance routine? Or if you're a tennis player, do you have a pre-serve routine? And do you believe that works for you? So if that is figured, you can say, okay, this athlete is mentally resilient. And the achievement orientation. Now, achievement orientation is a big terminology, but the meaning is simple. What is the orientation of this athlete to achieve? Is this athlete's motivation to avoid failure? No matter what, I can't fail. Is that the orientation? Or is the orientation, you know what, I want to succeed. I want to be my best. So when the orientation is to avoid failure, then the athlete goes in with the mindset of, I want to avoid failure because I don't trust myself. And that can cause a lot of stress to the athlete. So having the right achievement orientation, the orientation to chase success. Success here meaning doesn't have to be a podium finish, the person's own personal best. So when an athlete goes with that orientation of wanting to perform their best, then they enjoy the process. 
of competing. So this is what roughly the psychology of a sport performance entails. So what did COVID do? Now, how COVID has impacted currently the psychology of an athlete or a performer depends on their reaction to the COVID situation. Now, none of us had experienced COVID before. None of us, I want to believe, have experienced something Anyone who is like 50 years and below, I want to believe strongly that none of us have experienced something like this, which has impacted such pandemically, such intensely, even to day-to-day -day life, where we are really, you know, worried for our life. Now, for most of the athletes I worked with, it pissed them off. Frustrated, angry, and you know, some of them had, uh, at least two of them had planned marriage in December. So that had to go because the Olympics now is one year later. One of them wanted to retire. But through all this, there were two who were very happy. Why? Because to them, the COVID situation gave them another year to train. But out of those two, one comes from a country where the COVID situation became very bad around April, May. And now that person became very unhappy. And there's still that one person who's very happy. There's not much COVID in the country. This person, this athlete comes from and making the best use of the time this person has because the two athletes I talked about just now had barely made it to the qualifiers. And that meant they had extra time to work out. So really how this situation impacts us is based on our reaction. All right, now that we've understood that, let's look at what is the impact. There is a positive impact, there is a negative impact. Now, if those athletes who have seen this as a positive impact to them, certainly they're able to attain their optimal arousal levels, they're able to stay confident, stay focused, stay motivated, perform consistently, achieve the right achievement orientation, uh, they want to stay fit, they're do, trying hard to stay fit, they're trying hard to stay injury free. And mind you, most athletes who get to the Olympic levels have some nagging injury or the other. It might not be huge, but it's there. And this was also a time for them to heal, correct? But a vast majority of them are bound to feel very unprepared when they come back to a post-COVID situation. Why? Managing the over and under arousal could be very difficult. Knowing that they have not trained enough. Knowing that after the COVID situation is better, they can't start from where they left a few months ago. The first few weeks, first two months were still bearable. Now it's got to a point of frustration. They've had it. And no amount of mental resilience is helping them. Correct? Of course, we've been, we've been doing a lot of mental skills training and all that. But the fact remains that most of them are unable to train. And that is not good for the body of an athlete, let alone the psychology of a person. So issues concerning not being able to manage over and under arousal in terms of managing the situation having a low self-confidence about return to sport, being distracted by their own negative self-talk, their what ifs, their concerns, uh, you know, worried about the inconsistency in performance because they're not sure whether what worked for them in terms of the pre-performance routines might work for them this time. Having a wrong achievement orientation, most athletes are bound to avoid failure rather than chase success. And like I told you earlier, when a, an individual avoids failure, they go with a lot of stress. They're focusing on their weaknesses and they're focusing on the opponent's strengths. And that is a good recipe for stress-related injuries. And when you're so distracted and you can't give your 100% to the task at hand, there is no way your 100% best performance is gonna see the light of the day. It's impossible. That's an issue too. Having low physical strength, 
there's only so much training you can do within the confines of your family. You have to share space. There's so many people, perhaps there's family members who are working from home, family members who are kind of like, you know, studying and you have your online training. Maybe you have space constraints. Perhaps home is not the best place for you emotionally. Right? And then upon return, most of them will be rushing into getting back what, what they have lost. So they might overlook at kind of like, you know, peaking slowly, taking it slow, allowing the body to adapt. So just yesterday I was talking to, uh, you know, one of my athletes who's really disgruntled and he was telling me he's fed up doing mental rehearsal. He said he really wants to feel earth, the, the real field. He wants to smell. He wants to see. And that's not possible in his country. So when there's so much of stress, low motivation levels, low confidence levels, distractions, injuries are bound to happen too. And to top it all, if there's low physical strength, then the extent of injury can be really, really massive. So those are not the not so good, you know, impact of COVID. And certainly the athletes feel unprepared going into the competitions after, you know, the COVID situation. Now the big question, can the negative impacts be prevented? Not entirely. Impossible. Initially, I thought perhaps 80-90% when I started doing more, you know, mental stress training, more mental rehearsal with my athletes, you know, training in the mind because they're already experts at what they do. So having the training, of course, they had online stuff going on, but also using imagery and visualization to supplement their learning. Correct? But then there's only so much you can do through it. But certainly, the damage can be reduced. So there's still hope. But how does one do that? How do you actually, if not remove the negative impact of COVID in a post-COVID scenario, how can you reduce it? These are some of the ways. First of all, very important to be human. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be emotional. It's okay to cry. It's okay to scream. It's okay to get angry. But then from there, you need to take the next step. If you get stuck there, then you'll end up depressed. And that's not going to make you feel better because depression won't allow you to do things what you want to do. And then it's a downward spiral. Self-compassion is very important. You really want to take care of yourself. And self-compassion for others. When we help others, it, it gives us a lot of satisfaction. If you haven't tried, try it. Optimism. Now, optimism does not mean believing I can do something even if I don't know how to do it. No. Optim opti optimism is not bullshitting yourself now. Optimism is looking at the situation and believing that things can change if done a certain way and practicing it for yourself. Because when each person does that, that is when this COVID situation can be resolved. So as a sports fraternity, we all need to do what we need to do. We can't be cheating on the rules and regulations by quietly doing some training when we are trying to, you know, cut the chain of the spread. So we need to be very responsible, optimistic, having that gratitude. I can understand for high achievers, it's very difficult to handle failures because most of them are not used to it, right? And some of us are used to having the benefits of training and all of that. And perhaps for some of us, it, have, it was very difficult to get to where we have. And suddenly COVID has come as a stop. But COVID can become a comma based on our sense of gratitude. So showing a sense of gratitude, if we have meals to eat, 
if you have a place to live, if you are still able to do some online training. So be showing gratitude for all that you have had till now and what you're still able to do. I'm not saying that does not mean you get frustrated and angry about the situation. No, along with that, there has to be gratitude too. That is when it balances out. Then do you feel unfair for about those countries who don't have COVID and they're still training? No, you should be uh, finding yourself unlucky and seeing them as lucky people and being thankful that they don't have to go through what, what you're going through. So if uh, Tokyo 2021 does happen, it won't be an un unfair playing field. It might seem like because there are those countries who are still training and there are those countries that are completely shut. And there are those countries like Singapore there's, where there's partial training. It certainly won't be an unfair situation because we're talking about a pandemic here. We're talking about people's lives. It certainly is a unlucky situation. So for those of us who didn't get the benefit of you know, the uh, luxury of safety from COVID, we were not so lucky. And some were lucky, so we need to be happy of them, for them. Accepting the situation. And while you accept the situation, knowing what to focus on. There's a lot of things around you which are beyond your control. And if you focus on that, trust me, you're going to feel all the more frustrated. So focusing on what you can do and actually doing it. So this is the first time that this world is experiencing, at least for us, right? So this is a time when we want to rediscover ourselves, when we want to reinvent ourselves. Just you know, it's just a January or December. If someone were to announce to the world, you know what, all the lessons and everything can happen on Zoom. You don't need a classroom for this. I'm sure all of us would laugh at that person. But COVID has taught us that there are other ways, there are alternate means. For you at MET, you're lucky because uh, like Professor Kalpana was sharing with me, you had a system that was ready to take on the out of class learning, the online learning. But for most people in India, that's not the case. So it is a time to rediscover. It is a time to reinvent. So as athletes, as coaches, as physical educators, as sports system managers, you need to look at what are the different ways you can still get the best of the situation. Because if you're too busy complaining, this is not happening, that is not happening, the government won't do this, this, there is no end to it. And again, we always complain of things that are beyond our control. So let's focus on what we control and make the best of it. Having a daily routine helps. As athletes, as student athletes, you have a daily routine. To ha so have a daily routine. And that allows you, that gives you uh, some amount of commitment. That puts you know, uh, things in place for you. And that makes good use of your time. So think through how you want to st start your day, end your day. Use mental rehearsal, visualization, imagery, so you can train in your mind. So for example, again, if you're a swimmer, go through some race laps, the start, the finish, the turn. Whatever you do in training, you can also do in your mind because Imagery helps us strengthen the mental blueprint. Imagery helps us strengthen our muscle memory. It cannot replace physical training. Now that you don't have physical training, you're doing stuff online, do engaging in mental rehearsal through imagery can be very, very helpful. More importantly, stay fit, stay healthy, spend time with family, because I was also sharing with uh, Professor Kalpana just now that Every single Olympian I'm working with from the different countries I was talking about have reported that this is the first time ever in the last one decade or so, and in some cases two decades, that they've spent so much time at home. Some hadn't seen the seasons change because they're always living, you know, living out of suitcases, traveling from one place to the other, one competition to the other, one training to the other, one tournament to the other. And even if they're at home, they're not at home because their life is so hectic. So make use of this time. 
correct and one thing what i have understood and what i'm doing for myself is to remind myself because i also get frustrated for my athletes because when i hear these people who are supposed to be so strong these are you know past olympians these have been there done that and they are complaining i also become frustrated about covid but i remind myself that our life is the most precious if we don't have this life there's no performance opportunities and do not allow your profession your career or your sport to define you that is another thing covid is teaching us we are one person but we wear different hats you you perhaps someone's child someone's spouse someone's girlfriend boyfriend someone's sibling someone's grandchild you're a student if you're not a student pick up something to learn perhaps you have a career outside of sports so try to live in all of these you know selves of you and don't kind of alienate yourself isolate yourself to your athlete self only and with that i want to end my conversation thank you for listening in so if you have any questions i can take them uh thank you ma'am sanjana most welcome i hope that was not too long kalpana no no not the least uh, i thought it, will, it should go on and on because it was so nice so smooth to so soft i will say in other words uh to listen to you it was Thank very very nice uh, i just wanted to share with you that uh, we have a diverse uh, listeners and i want just want to have your thoughts yeah. can you share your thoughts how to handle in this scenario our children who are special because we have good number of special educators and they are leading their states from the front who have joined us and their team yeah. has also joined us so would you yeah. like to throw some light on that please okay now i am not an expert in special children yeah. um or special athletes but i've worked with some of them the paralympians and stuff and i come from a clinical psychology background so i have learned a little bit certainly the challenges for special kids will be multifold because for most of these kids stepping out and getting into physical activity and play is perhaps the thing they look forward to maybe that's the most joyous situation so my suggestion would be to engage them online so you can have a zoom meeting but then uh make the zoom meeting very hands on very discussion based so basically what you could do is you could just give them uh you know an image an image about what you're trying to tell them and ask them to explain that image to you what they understand from that image at whatever level so what these children are looking for is engagement yes correct so as long as they are engaged they'll feel happy and trust me just knowing that you're still in touch with them will fill them with happiness right so rather than uh, you know uh, your intention is to make them feel better so rather than engaging them with a uh, question such as when you know the lockdown will end and all of that since perhaps even the prime minister doesn't know when the lockdown will end <laughs> that is how covid is it has shaken us all right so what you could do is uh give them some homework to do keep them engaged you know very easy doable homework because you don't want to set them up for failure something that is manageable something that keeps them motivated and then you can ask them you can have one session where you just ask them you know each one takes like 2 minutes to talk about you know what they like about the sport what they have liked about the activities that were done what can they recall about the past activities that were done and have a lot of conversation and do, during the conversations every few minutes depending on the challenge they have get them to do some movements because movements are very important for the growth of the brain and our brain grows till almost 23 24 years of age and a crucial part of a brain grows through uh, during the time of adolescence and movement is required for the growth of the brain because when movement stops the growth of the brain stops and especially with kids with uh, you know uh, challenges or who are differently able psychologically physically they need that growth of the brain because in most cases it's not very developed 
So engaging them in thinking, reasoning, and, you know, kind of like challenge them. And how about giving them duties to do? So they actually plan the sessions, what should happen in the next Zoom session. Of course, you will have your 10 minutes of your plan. Let's say your session is for an hour. You'll have your 10, 15 minutes. But each person or a group of them plan for the, uh, the remaining 45 minutes on how they want to run the session. What do they want to discuss? So by including them, you make them feel uh, a lot more confident. You make them feel a lot more valued. And you make them feel very psychologically safe as well. So um, that was one way I would do it if I were in your place. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I think it's a great way uh, to think about these the children because they are our children. And uh, sure. I'm happy that uh, you've answered it so well because uh, we connect with you right away. The moment the words you are using for everything, I think it's an immediate connection uh, uh, to hear you. Everything's uh, coming from my heart. I know, I know that when people speak from heart, nothing stops them. You see, that that's the yes, Ashish. You would like to ask some? I have, I have a question for Sanjana. Like you know, a generic question basically. Since like uh, psychology is not uh, sports psychology is not limited to like only elite athletes. So yeah. uh, these athlete, elite athletes, I mean those who have might might have like represented their country at major events. Uh, yeah. They are kind of, uh, they have seen the world, they have been into sports for last 10, 15, 20 years. And there is one other category of, you know, the beginners, uh, one who is at grassroots level or at intermediate level. So I guess the, the numbers of that level is much more, it, it, it may be 80 to 85% yeah. of the total strength. Sure. Now, my question is, uh, from a psychologist point of view, who is, I mean, everyone is getting affected, who is getting like more affected with this COVID situation, post COVID situation. And uh, like what, what exactly you have seen, uh, especially with the grassroots level kids in terms of, you know, the future coming. All of them, all of them equally, I would say as much as I have my 17 Olympians from these different countries, I'm working with them. I have a few hundred athletes I'm working with at the developmental level too correct and i spend at least eight hours each day doing my consultations all of them at their own level because you know when we talk about a challenge we can't say your challenge is less than mine it's how they experience it now for those who have been there done that because they've been there done that they overthink that's their problem and they are competing at a level where even a minute uh, you know lapse in skill can take away the podium finish from them like if you look at Olympic final, the skill level is all there. That is their worry. And for the developmental kids, they're on an upward swing and suddenly the COVID has come and a few months of not training can take away their ranking, their position. And you know, parents have spent money. I have two children. I've been an athlete parent. My boys are 19 and 21 and they are tennis players. They used to be, now they're coaches. So just supporting two of them has taken for about say 10 years of active competing has taken about 1 million Singapore dollars. So there's a lot of investment. There's a lot of blood, sweat, emotions that goes in. So it's never just the athlete who is, you know, getting impacted. So I would say everyone in their own space, because how deeply they feel is what matters. So it would be wrong to put a number. Sorry, Ashley. Yeah, so so my that was a very sport broadcaster question. So why I'm saying this because if you're going out yeah. for a competition and training, suppose yeah. you have a competition in Munich or you know in in France. So uh, as an elite athlete, you know there are going to be so many problems like yeah. training in the country, then leaving the country at airports, meeting people, then going to France or your Munich. Yeah. Uh, so that is a different thing. One. Small kid mm -hmm. who is in class grade seven is only uh, he, he don't even know like which level he is going to play. So yeah. don't you think his mindset is only fixed like to that particular? No, for arena. us, right? For adults, for us who have seen this and that, we feel your problem should be less because you don't have traveling involved, you don't have an Olympics at stake. But for that child. Their, you know, gully game can be their Olympic. They could be playing street cricket. 
to that child, that could be his Olympic. You know what I mean? And I think what Ashish is trying to say is as the more elite you get, you have a lot of challenges like transport, like, you the know. Difficulties but, basically. The yeah, difficulty basically. Yeah. is being placed yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. then you're also growing with experience. So if I were to talk about psychologically, I think it is almost the same for everyone. Because for each of them, as long as they're passionate, as long as they want something very badly, then this will impact them again if they allow it to impact them negatively. You can react. This is a sad situation. You can get angry, you can get frustrated. But will you stop there or will you continue doing that and get into depression? So that's a choice the person can make, knowing that there's so much that's beyond their control. So I, I would see, and then like every time I get uh, asked, you know, what is the best time to start mental skills training? My answer is all of us have the mental skills inside of us. There's nothing extraordinary the sports psychologist gives you. The sports psychologist only has to facilitate bringing that out of you, telling you you have this and use it. The younger you start, the better. My youngest elite athlete is preparing for 2028 Olympics. He's only 12 years old and we've been working for a year. So if things are set right when they're young, then when they're older, you don't have to do sports psychology with them. Mm -hmm. The best time is the developmental mm -hmm. period. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ashish. No, Ashish. So, so basically what I understood is like, you know, uh, for, a, for a small kid who is in a school, for him, his annual sports day is a kind of Olympics for him. Sure, right. certainly. Right. Because I remember my annual sports days so well. Yeah. Yeah. And and second thing, you know, uh, again, I will, uh, like, since, like, you know, uh, IPL is going to happen in, in, uh, in Dubai, for example. And the players, they, on one side, they will be happy, you know, coming back to the field. On the other side, there is a bio bubble, which they cannot break for next, you know, 80 days. Yeah. So IPL is like for 52 days and... Uh, like uh, they have to be in that zone uh, for like 80 days. They cannot even meet anyone from outside. So, so that was the question basically how difficult it is going to be for them. Uh, it is basically. going to be difficult, but it is better than not being able to do it. Mm -hmm. So having that self-awareness, having that gratitude that you're still able to do this much, you're still able to make money out of this. And because of IPL, there's so many people who have jobs. No, people can look at IPL only cricketers making money. Perhaps not. There's so many thousands of them that are involved. And you know, uh, there, there are questions like what happens when there's no audience? Now for those of the athletes who were playing to the audience, see when you draw motivation from external factors, when those factors go missing, it is going to impact your performance. So the best thing is to find motivation from within so that whether they are fans or not, whether they are cheering for you or jeering you, it doesn't matter. So again, it's about gratitude, self-compassion, but most importantly, compassion for others who are unable to do what you're able to do. So it's really time to become human. That is what COVID is teaching us. Yeah. I Absolutely. no longer have to think about myself. If I sneeze, if I don't wear a mask, I might be infecting somebody else. So COVID is forcing us to think about everyone, which was somehow kind of lost, I think. You know, I, I still remember, like, uh, we, we covered a lot of stories during major events, whether it's like uh, FIFA World Cup or um, ICC World Cups. So we used to write a lot of articles. There was uh, conflicts going on between, you know, whether uh, like players' wives or girlfriends should be allowed with them during the competition <laughs> or not. Reason being, because there were so many players who got motivated and there were like, uh, you know, uh, results that if that person is with his wife, the, the performance improved. It can be the other side also, but what I'm trying to say is now there cannot be something like that in the near future. No, but that's what I'm saying. If each of them have their own external motivation, which is extraordinary, then it puts a lot of pressure on the personnel who are managing it. Of the six other countries I work with, other than Singapore, correct? There is no way the family members can even visit the players at Olympic Village, even the days they're not competing. They have a different space where the athletes, when they're free, can come out, meet their family, and then go back. 
think that culture has to change because mm-hmm. young people all players in india get impacted by what cricket does mm-hmm. you see yeah they you might know, not be setting I, the right example yeah i, I still <laughs> remember that the good thing is like you know we talk about virtual things and like uh, hum, hum, we we pray a lot especially being in india so i, I still remember all these uh, wrestlers and boxers whenever they enter the village uh since i traveled with them a lot they they, they make a small mandir you know in their room they put especially yeah. like they are, they worship lord hanuman a lot so they'll put a photo because especially these wrestlers and boxers and that gives lot of motivation to them so that that's is okay some, because yeah. yeah but that this a motivation of god this god won't sms them whatsapp them telegram them uh <laughs> this won't argue with them you, you know it's like what is this external thing you're depending on yeah so it, it there has to be some common sense and if if someone does not have common sense the managers the personnel who take care of this they need to put sense really that culture has to change so is it like something it gives you an automatic happiness satisfaction even like as you said <laughs> no if it's god i can imagine because it's the faith it gives you strength yeah but i think everything else can change if it's external yeah except oh. your mother <laughs> i think uh, time's up for your talk ashish yeah i think we can take ashish uh, yes rahul you want to say something ma'am we have a question from the audience uh, for sanjana ma'am so can we take yeah. uh we can uh, i should take professor kalpana yeah i i will take care okay so i think we uh, ashish can just make his presentation and then we can pull all the question answers together uh, after ashish's uh, presentation so we can take forward ashish's presentation and then all the audiences uh, are requested to put their questions either in the chat or in the question answer and we will be more than happy to answer each question so thank sure, you very yeah, much over. you can do that over to okay, rahul ma'am. okay ma'am so uh, before uh, handing over to the mic to ashish sir i would like to introduce uh, uh, ashish sir sir ashish bhardwaj is a sports broadcaster and analyst ashish is one of the most travel indian sports analyst and broadcaster who did major events like icc cricket world cup asian games commonwealth games olympics and many world championships in different disciplines before starting his own venture he was part of the co team of espn who brought revolution in digital media presently he and his team is creating technology in artificial intelligence and one of india's first multi cam video analysis center so welcome you sir thank you sir over to you thank you so much uh, dr rahul and uh... thank you so much sir <laughs> <laughs> Professor Kalpana, for the introduction, and uh, it's like uh, before I start, I would say like MIT is kind of a home to me. Uh, it, it's something <laughs> you know. You. Every student is like uh, very close to my heart since uh, personally I know most of the kids, and uh, I now didn't know so, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and <laughs> few of my few of my classmates classmates are also like in the faculty. My batchmates they are also working there. So it, it's a kind of a home for me. a very comfortable atmosphere and i would say like you know you are in the safest of hands in india in terms of uh, the best of uh, professional people and the facilities in in mit i can so add I, one line rashish for you yeah he has a never say no attitude whenever he is called never say no yeah. it's been years years now awesome. and this is one example thank you ashish thank you thank you so much ma'am it's, it's an honor and opportunity to be on a platform so i'll just start with the, these kind of small slides with with few words in it so basically like you know i would it's all about psychological analysis of sports uh, performance post covid scenario basically i would say you know it's it's uh, covid is still there and uh, it's a new world of uh, uh, you know uh, training or competition where uh, there can be there is already like a lot of changes in everything so i i will give most of you know the live examples and uh, day to day conversation i am having with my my friends who are staying outside india who are in in india who are doing uh, who are in the camps 
and uh, someone who is all gearing up for IPL. So I will I will divide this uh, this topic in two parts. One is the competition, and and one is training. Why competition? Because it is for the first time in the history of uh, sports that uh, like closed door matches we call uh, a closed door uh, a league match in football that only happened when there was a fight between the clubs and for the for, for the sake of punishment uh, the match in Italy was played like in closed doors where no audience were involved. But now since it has been like kind of mandatory thing, so uh, Champions Leagues like happened and. Uh, Bayern Munich won the match, uh, like uh, they they were the winners in Champions League, and England is like uh, hosting Pakistan in cricket. It is also like going on, and the biggest Indian tournament we call it like Indian Premier League, that is all uh, set to start this month only. So these three major events, uh, you know, uh, they, they 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 are already to happen. One is happening, and one is going to happen. So why? I want to talk about competition because you can imagine, you can visualize yourself that any athlete who is like uh, used to play in huge crowds, they are going to play with no audience and they have to perform in that uh, in, in that atmosphere. It's a Champions League is like you know soccer. We all know it's like the 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 top European sports and Champions League is something which involves the top winning clubs of the nation and they compete against each other. So that tournament happened in the venue was changed and that happened in uh, uh, Portugal, Lisbon and uh, successfully happened and Bayern Munich won the, the match. So presently, if you, if you see like the India-Pakistan series, uh, just, just imagine like, you know, you, you are hitting a six and there is no crowd who is actually, you know, cheering you or motivating you. And there are so many players in the world who actually like that. Someone like Chris Gale, um, who, who always loves to be a kind of crowd puller. We, were, we use the word crowd puller. Now, imagine those cricketers or sports person whom they are going to pull. It's all going to be digital. They can only pull the crowd on television or any other digital platform, whether it can be a mobile or an iPad or a laptop. So, they cannot pull any crowd, especially on the field. And... Uh, Last but the most important event which is going to happen this month is going to be like the Indian Premier League. So our, our, our teams, our friends are already in Dubai. Uh, every day they are posting good videos and a uh, lot of controversies already started by, you know, uh, a major, uh, like uh, uh, many of the athletes and, and the support staff, they were, they were worried about, you know, uh, this, this situation. But what happened with the Chennai Super Kings, like uh, their support staff and they, they got, uh, they tested positive for, for COVID. So, no, imagine the situation in the, in their uh, dressing room, how they are going to motivate. Second most important thing, like suppose a tournament started, IPL is, is a long tournament, it's a 50-day tournament. And I would also request Sanjana to give, you know, inputs. Maybe uh, there can be an idea. Uh, a team of 11 or 15 players, they are playing in the tournament. And uh, one player who is, like undoubtedly, like he is scoring runs and you know making the team uh, win. He he got tested of uh, he 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 become positive somehow. So what is going to be the impact on on that uh, particular team? If if one of the finest batsmen or the wicket taker, if he test positive, uh, what is going to be the the mental status of of that team? Second most important thing, the financial impact, like. Uh, what I have read is like, you know, um, any player who already landed, any player, any support staff, coach, uh, anyone who landed in Dubai, he is going to be paid full. So, uh, there is going to be a COVID replacement, uh, as per my knowledge. If a team of 15 is playing in, in a tournament and if someone is getting tested uh, positive of COVID, there is going to be a substitution. And uh, now imagine the, the additional burden of, you know, uh, that amount, which you are the the player is uh, playing, he is fit, but he is COVID positive and he is sent back, or he is in quarantine in that place. So the the mental status of that team, it's it's going to impact a lot. So as I said, you know, um, we we need to live with this situation at least for some more months, and imagine the situation of uh, these greatest of athletes in different sports. We talk about cricket, how they are going to play. 
so this is going to be a major cricketing tournament globally where like uh, all these player in this tournament they are used to see you know uh, if it's eden garden if it's it's one khade or it's it's um, firosha kotla in delhi or brabon stadium so all the all the like uh, ipl venues are almost every time they are full you you see like most of the people they 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 are they are trying to get in they like they pay a lot of money to buy the tickets but imagine like the impact of a, a closed door match without any audience on on the players how they are going to do it i'm, I'm wondering like you know there is this show kapil sharma show where you, you might have seen uh, they have uh, virtually created a graphic where like uh, behind the guest uh, you can see the audience for us it will look better but the the broadcast the production i mean whenever there is a six like being hit by the by by batsman so immediately the second shot is you know the reaction of the crowd how how it's going to attract the audience not only since like there is no audience on the ground but someone watching the the match at his place how can you feel i mean what what feeling you are going to have that a player is taking a wicket and uh, the reaction is coming out of only amongst the 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 players themselves there is no audience at least for next uh, one month so what they have decided in for one month they, there is not going to be any audience maybe after that they may allow but it it's definitely going to uh, create a big impact uh, on their performance uh, we we cannot say because uh, they they are like they have the best of the teams as uh, we also have like one of the one of the finest psychologists in this uh, session so she might be aware right you know how the players uh, are getting prepared uh, in in this situation like you know uh, how how it's going to happen so that that is one thing you know coming back to like uh, playing with and without crowd as as i discussed you know it's it's something very dicey for you know uh, that the players and and the management basically so they as i said their their revenue is being cut by the the gate fee the gate money but still ipl is happening as we discussed it's it's going to create a lot of uh, employment for most of the people who are part of it uh, but again playing in closed door and playing without crowd it's it's something very difficult especially in a game of cricket uh i can imagine you know like ipl happening and they might put some big giant screens where they can take uh, virtual shots of the audience and who are clapping and who are cheering imagine the noise which they get uh, during the ipl or any any match uh, the support which they get uh, during the the match and are, are there going to be any cheerleaders for this uh, ipl because there is no audience whom whom they are going to motivate Uh, are they going to be like big giant screen for for the players so a lot of questions and i guess uh, uh, this this is a right platform uh, like our expert psychologist she can tell what may will be going to in the minds of uh, the athletes now the most important thing you know since uh, ipl is something it's a professional league it has nothing to do with olympics or asian games so this is like uh, training for the olympic athletes it it resumed that that is something you know the biggest uh, uh, thing happened in last 5 months in india why because for when covid started i guess it was like 21st of march when the camps they were like uh, the the stadiums they were closed and all the top athletes they went back to their places before this uh, uh, covid we already uh, qualified you know in in major events so many athletes qualified and certain quotas are also left so all these athletes uh, who were training hard uh, imagine a boxer basically so for how long you can tell him okay you do fitness you go for a run uh, you do uh, you do you do shadow boxing and after like you know 15 20 days they they will feel like where is the opponent how how much impact this covid has created during Uh, like last 3 4 months you you are in a compact sport and there is no opponent so how hard you train how fit you can keep yourself it's always like the, the most important thing is you need to have an opponent uh, in front of you with who with whom you can train and you can do, apply all the skills and tactics so good thing is you know these these camps started and my team is already working uh, in these camps helping these athletes during the covid we also helped them by giving them schedules by making them good videos by 
helping them with their opponents and those who qualified we already made a kind of archives of who are the top opponents you are going to face what is their strength what is their weakness and in this camp definitely the most important thing which everyone of us should know is like the sops created by different organization whether it's like sports authority of india the ministry or the state government it's very important to read and go through those sops those like do's and don'ts uh, of uh, of indian sports now for competition what is going to be the sop what are the requirements and uh, do's and don'ts of uh, organizing a competition and for the camp obviously it's it's very strict at time there were like 100 uh, athletes in one camp now the strength is only you know 2021 so there are less sparring partners there are less you know support staff there are less numbers still they are training and even uh, they are not been given like the freedom to train the way they were training they need to maintain those uh, guidelines and they are they are working hard and they are going through a tough phase but still uh, we are very hopeful that you know uh, it's for everyone in, in globally maybe like in india it's it's at its at its peak but in europe uh, people they recovered and uh, uh, since the numbers are less in europe they already started training the way they were doing so is it going to create an impact on the countries which are affected badly by the covid that is going to be discussed uh, how much like so for example like india brazil us they are the worst affected country and there are going to be countries who are very good in sports they are not at all they got affected but uh, now they have recovered so now already they are having an edge over other countries in terms of training and uh, uh, you know competition so th- that is you know what what i have been discussing with my friends in the camps that what all they are doing every day uh, while having the meals in the mess what are the sops when they go to training uh, in the hall what are the sops what they do what they not do they are not allowed to come closer to the to the opponent what they are doing is still shadow boxing or you know kind of uh, with the bag so all, all these things are happening and at this point of time it's it's very uh, i i would say it's a tough phase and the importance of sports psychology it's really going to help you technology is already in, at its peak this is the best time where uh, someone who never used this used the system or never prepared a presentation they are now able to make all those presentation and at the same time yeah this is a best time to have the best of psychologists helping the athletes coaches and the mental uh, like the the mental status of the support staff also so i i would say you know uh, and i, I would also request uh, sanjana to give like you know kind of his inputs which also we can share with our teammates and colleagues like you know the the advantage of disadvantage uh, for the countries who are going through a toughest phase and someone who already recovered from covid when they're going to meet after 6 7 months is there going to be an advantage for those countries so i i would like you know Sorry, kind of, i need to unmute myself are you asking me a question now yeah yeah you i'm just respond now yeah, of course it's going to be an advantage certainly but like i said either we can feel happy for them and sad for ourselves or we can be angry so anger is not the way forward you know we have to be happy that those countries got lucky those countries didn't have to go through what we are going through and again it's a thinking of do you see it as an unfair advantage i would think we should not look it at it as an unfair advantage we should be happy for them and uh, they they will know that if they made it to a podium finish and you didn't they know they also had the benefit of not having covid for longer so um that is what i would say and then ashish what i'm experiencing also is uh and what i've been telling my olympians to is uh if they keep on comparing how it was before and how it is now they are not going to feel great it was still okay to do that com- comparison say till about april may june now we are already in september it has been more than 4 or 5 months of this and we still don't have a definite answer so now we need to get into a situation where first we accept the world will not go to how it was pre covid it is not going to go there either it's going to get better 
or get worse only two things can happen and how much time will it take for an athlete to understand this situation no uh, it like... takes a few minutes to accept that this is the situation so stop comparing how it was when will it become like that the world is not going to become like how it was but what you do today the decisions you make what you do with your time can make the world better for you it is never the world that makes you feel good or not it is what you feel around the world so if you can equip yourself with skills which you would not get time to do may it could be cooking it could be washing plates very cleanly it could be cleaning the house very well every skill has some cognitive value to it and without cognition without thinking and reasoning nothing is going to happen so the choice is us do we stay sit and wait for the world to get back do we compare and get frustrated or should should we decide hey what can i do one thing better than yesterday now what you can do might be very less compared to what your friend can do don't compare yourself don't compare yourself with other countries don't compare yourself with the person next next to you you are on your own journey now but the good thing about mind is the mind is under your control the choice is yours if you don't know how to deal with it you can ask questions to people who know you can take that help but the decision has to be yours because no amount of sports psychologist can do things for you that's not going to happen and talking about crowd no crowd of course that part of the business the broadcasting is not as exciting but ipl should be happy that there's some kind of you know live stuff happening there's some kind of respite it is going to keep people busy in fact it might come in the way of online education but still <laughs> it is a good thing for people who enjoy it train your mind you know our, our brain who we think is very intelligent trust me it's so stupid when you imagine it can't tell the difference between whether it's real or whether you are imagining the brain will anyway send signal to your body so what you tell your brain is how you will feel how you will feel is how you will experience so the connection is that simple did you ever get a chance to uh, work with the with with an athlete who tested positive with the covid or oh, one of my athletes a spouse passed away oh. to covid okay talking about this i can give you an example no amount of preparation in life trust me is going to ever prepare, prepare you during the youth olympic games 2010 and i i can't mention the details we were outside swiss hotel and you know our team was preparing to leave on the bus and guess what happens we heard a loud loud thud and we look back we see someone had jumped from the top floor of the hotel and the head was in shambles that person was dead oh someone committed suicide right in front of your eyes and you're on your way to the competition oh would anything prepare you for that uh ashish <laughs> Yeah, Haan, yeah you continue and you just uh, push me when yeah. uh, we can take some questions of the audiences yeah fine yeah. you so, can so, continue ashish yeah, yeah yeah so you know uh, i i would love to have kind of you know with with someone already into the business so the things which never happened it's already happening but i just want to know something uh, related to like on uh, field activity as i discussed like you know uh, suppose a match going on Uh, a player scored decent number of runs and in between the tournament he tested positive so the the status of that particular person who has been thrown in like isolation and the status of the whole team so don't you think like you know the presence of though like all these athletes they are like very mature and well experienced but uh, to fill that gap uh don't you think like uh, we we need kind of more of mental mental trainers working with yeah, them yeah 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 because that is the cr- critical incident analysis we do that is the critical incident support we have around the major games major competition 
that's important because nothing prepares you. So, so the, but then India is still warming up to that idea. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm talking about this particular tournament. As I said, you know, uh, it's it's not about money. Oh, but the, the IPL, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because they have families, they'll be very affected. Certainly. And I want to believe, you know, there is a myth that uh, athletes are very egoistic, coaches are very egoistic. There's always some reason to their behavior. So if you can understand that behavior, it is not easy to build that rapport. I mean, rather, it's not difficult to build that rapport. Yeah. But I One, think what Prof Kalpana is telling us is you complete your slides first. <laughs> you want to do that? Ashish? No, no, no I, I, I was not saying so. I was actually trying you're done to... With the, I was yeah. trying to say that we have some questions from our audience. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we can we take can, it actually. We can we take can it. Yeah. Take it and yeah. uh, no, you can complete Ashish. I am. It's going great. I know that audiences I, are also enjoying. I'm getting messages oh, all done? the time. <laughs> I, I am. You know, I just want to engage everyone in terms of because it's something uh, which we have not gone through and things are starting. So. Uh, yes. it, it's all hypothetical situation which I may talk, but that is going to an expert psychologist can actually uh, give the right direction on on our questions. Basically, as I said, you know, someone tested positive in in the mid of the tournament. The first thing is, you know, the recent example of a cricketer like someone like Suresh Raina. There's so many stories being cooked. Uh, why he came back? He went to Dubai and he came back. So uh, the latest update on that was because you know uh, he's having like two small daughters. And uh, he, he, what he said, you know, he don't want to risk his family's life over IPL, over his uh, sports career. So that is uh, one. And do, do you think like that is going to create an impact on other athletes also? Though they are playing uh, and cricket is their life, that is in their blood. So at the same time, they are risking their families to some extent? Um, my, my answer to that, Ashish, would be if you are an adult, a grown person, Others' decisions should not impact you. Yeah. Now, if you are only twelve players and by losing one you can't play a match, it will impact everyone. Then everyone has to be responsible. Responsible. But the COVID situation is such that there's nothing right or wrong about any decision. If he he chose his family over cricket, good on him because that's important to him. But if somebody else chose cricket over their family, good on them, because that's important to them. So there's no right or wrong answer to this, as long as they're in peace with their decision. The, the world, world is going to judge it. Every move you do will be judged. You're a celebrity. But yeah. the choice has to be yours, and you need to be peace, in peace with your choice. Yeah. And you need to own your decision. Yeah. So it's, uh, I can imagine you know, any major event happening, uh, there is one speaker and there is no audience. <laughs> uh, like, you know, it's just the way, you know, we are doing this conference where two people are like one people telling and you cannot see anyone live. So this is going to happen in, in the coming coming events. And especially, as I said, there are a lot, lot of players whom I personally know who are like uh, a big performers like in, in front of crowds. And when there is no crowd, they, they lose their, you know, uh, motivation to play. So th th there's one player. Obviously, everyone wants and loves winning. They will play for the team and for the club. But at the same time, they the motivation that derive to perform better, that is no more available for them. So they need but to that's find a problem one. because it was their choice to get motivated. Now they have to change it. They like for example, to... during a competition, if things are not working and if you still want to do the same thing, it won't work. So you have to change tactic. And I want to believe they will change tactic, you know. There, there needs to be an auto mode, you know. <laughs> they need to change immediately without crowd, okay. I guess they're already, most of them, they're prepared to play in front of like uh, kind of only the officials and the umpires and the referees yeah. without uh, any, any spectator in front of them. So perhaps we'll take questions from the audience. Yeah. There are some questions. Uh, would you like me to do it? So uh, I can sure, quickly I mean, put that too. Ashish, yeah. you want to go first? No, it, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm so. Yeah. No, no, answering the questions. You see, there's a window. No, I, will, I will see for which who is the question. I'll put it right away. Sure, that'll be great. So, yeah, thank you. 
Okay, so this question comes from Saurav Fazdar, and he this question is for Madam Sanjana, and uh, the question says uh, if we look at the effect of pandemic on sports, it's equally affecting parents of grassroots level sports person. What are the ways to ensure parents send the kids to field as they are psychologically in fear of getting infected? Yeah, Saurav, great question. I need of the hour your question, but my suggestion would be. listen to what the parents say because for every parent their child is very precious and what they believe is how it should be because this covid time is something we have not experienced before maybe god forbid something like this happens again we'll have a better answer for the parent and way of impressing them so if the parents are not ready to send their child please do not force them or encourage them to do it and how can you uh, a confirm to them that their child won't get infected because it is within beyond your control so my suggestion would be do not uh you know confirm or uh, kind of like um what to say give hope to anyone that you will ensure that the child or your athlete won't be infected because you can't control that for you you can only keep yourself safe do you know keep your hands clean wear the mask do whatever but anything can happen any time so my suggestion would be to just listen to the parents and it's okay if the child loses training for a year it's okay if the professionally the child does not make it in sport they'll figure something in life but right now their safety uh, that they're alive is more important yeah thank you sanjana i think uh, it's well taken that parents have their only hope in children and they should be taken Yeah. and children should keep listening to their parents okay so we move to the next question which is from basanthi and she is trying to learn from you to suggest uh, some mental relaxation techniques for professional athletes to practice at home during this pandemic period okay basanthi if you are into yoga or meditation my suggestion would be to do a shavasana all right now shavasana in the west world is known as progressive muscle relaxation now the the terminology terminology might seem like oh my god this must be something very big no it's very very simple so basically from head to toe or starting from toe to head you are tensing and relaxing your muscles and the best is to do it in a position uh, where you know you don't have a pillow and you're lying flat in a safe place so there are multiple youtube videos with audio that will actually give you instructions on how to go about it and trust me it will be very helpful because what happens basically is of course by when your breathing regulates you know uh, there's a lot more oxygen that goes into your brain and your the processing or efficiency of the brain improves and you're able to think better but then more importantly because you're focused on listening to the instruction of the tape and you're focused on tensing your muscles and relaxing them it takes away the uh, it it distracts your mind into what you need to do from what the time uh, mind was previously engaged with the stressful thoughts so it's a good distraction strategy and then when you tense your muscles and relax them when there's blood flow and oxygen reaches all parts of the body you truly truly feel relaxed so it works at many levels and it's not very difficult to do that was something but make sure you have not had food immediately at least an hour after you food uh, have food because uh, they generally ask you or uh, you know guide you to tense your muscles and relax and certainly not when you're injured i hope that explains yeah thank you uh, so the next question i am putting is uh, for ashish and this has come from aman kumar and he says uh, since you've been talking about cricket so he has a question on that only and he says due to covid situation the crowd is not allowed to support their players whether in cricket football etc how the player could be motivated or tackle this situation without the presence of crowd and especially for players like virat kohli or others will there be any positive or negative response according to their situation yeah i mean we already discussed this so the good yeah. <laughs> it, it's for everyone actually uh, whether it's virat kohli or rohit sharma 
uh, as like sanjana said they need to uh, create a kind of auto mode in their body that you know uh, they should realize that there is not going to be any spectator in the in the arena and uh, definitely like uh, whether it's going to affect their performance or not uh, as as we discuss they are, they are win, they are playing for a title and with time i guess it will take at least uh, uh, 7 days or 10 days that they will they will realize that they have to play like that so maybe not the first the first day is going to be really cru- crucial for with whoever is playing there Uh, maybe after like a week's time or 15 days time they will be kind of adapting themselves themselves with with that situation and just to add to that ashish it also depends on the personality of a person you know if they have this uh, personality factor of openness then they're open to new ideas and they'll adapt easily if they are a very extrovert kind of person it might impact them because people who are extroverts like that attention yeah you know and when if you're a celebrity then mostly you're comfortable with that so yeah. it might impact you but there are also those people who are introvert so quietly this could be very beneficial and because it's a team game it's kind of like a mixed bag but irrespective they need to step up to the occasion and uh, they need to have this sense of gratitude that they had this opportunity and they need to display the best efforts for the world to see because everyone is wanting to learn from them if they only give a negative feedback that's going to kill the motivation and hopes of those who are waiting to experience that so i'm really hoping they make this take good care of this opportunity to spread out the message that it can be done mm-hmm. and they will never know if it was their best because there's nothing to compare to you know the most the biggest challenge is going to be for someone who was like for whom this ipl or any tournament is going to be their first tournament and second yeah. thing like uh, who are already like kind of at the end of their careers and as i said you know it's it's a professional league and there is always hiring and firing so there's no excuse whether it's covid or whether it's uh, diarrhea or whether it's tb you you perform you are there if you are not if you won't perform thank you so much so it could that- also be the free trip the shopping that has been affected you know for many other <laughs> yeah so it's many like tangents this, uh, to it yeah <laughs> ashish we can either choose to look at what's not working well or we can choose to look at what's going well yeah and in this covid situation where it's a matter of people's lives to be able to do even this is um, amazing so if they can focus on that then i think Uh, that would set a good example for everyone yeah they would have to never, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. never about whether you are olympian or whether you are like you know the captain of indian cricket team it's for anyone at yeah. least for these people they have prize money to look forward to they are in an environment where they can be themselves they don't have to wear their mask all the time but there are those who have nothing to look forward to the millions of young children in india for whom sports was keeping them going yes perhaps education is not what they wanted just yeah. playing just being there and you know play has a very uh, you know huge cognitive impact yeah it's not just about physical growth so my heart goes out to them yeah but then the good thing is young children are very good at you know a survival but if the people if the adults around them are always complaining and cribbing <laughs> that is what these young children will learn So I think for us here who are participating we should be the responsible person. We need to have a positive tone. Again by by having a positive tone I'm not saying you need to bullshit yourself to believe that there's no covid and it's not impacting you no. You need to show your emotions. The children should know it's okay to be emotional. But the children should also know in you know in this adversity we need to find opportunities. We need to figure something So this is also an amazing platform first to test our own values and what we you know showcase to these young minds Absolutely we, we really have the most important responsibility right now than it ever was Sorry prof kalpana you were saying something no, I just wanted to add that uh, this is a very right time when when we when we are at home with our families and our reflections either way whether it is a parent or a child our reflections are actually 
uh, on both sides i am a parent i am at home the way i take my job today or the way i am doing my tasks today whether my house chores or my uh, office work they will have reflections on my children they are observing me full time now sure. yeah. and if i become very anxious about doing things i don't think that i'm going to set a message correct to right. my children that i have self control also and so it's uh, it's same uh, i think with what ashish was trying to say for the ipl players they become the big giant parents i should say if they have an opportunity to play so oh, they become yeah. a role model tomorrow so they better understand that they have a big responsibility rather than just going and playing correct yes you know when the first set of people went to moon and came back and everyone wanted to know how it felt <laughs> they are really. you know yeah. they are all astronaut they are wearing the same dress in the play <laughs> yeah, yeah so the yeah. cricketers they have become astronauts <laughs> So and world know, has, world has flattened. Do you see? <laughs> yeah, and here uh, we we are talking about uh, people with good situation, good backgrounds. There are millions of people right now where the house or their home might not be the safest place for them. So to those young people, it is an opportunity to step up their skills of managing, to reflect. their anger towards their parents is it justified what are they blaming their parents or what are they angry about the world has paused which means a lot of thinking will happen but again it's a decision what direction of thinking you take so as educators for us if we go into a, a home through a zoom you know classroom we have that ability to take the attention of that child into positive things and we can do that for the child irrespective of how their you know real situation is correct so yeah it's it's going to be very challenging for everyone sure uh, we have a next question questions? yes yes ma'am yeah. yes ma'am we have a next question from dr sushma uh, what about the athlete who has been covid positive and now uh, his mental state uh, state is ruined and financial state is not uh, sound how can he or she may do come back a very tough situation a uh, meaning the most tough my suggestion would be to let the athlete know to come back to sport should be the last on their mind they need to be taking care of their health they need to be focusing on getting better if if you have uh, you know 20 rupees for food i might suggest them you know make sure you take a line because you need vitamin c make sure within the money you have you eat healthy survival is key staying safe is key sports can wait sports can really wait but then as an educator each time you get an opportunity to connect with this athlete remind them of what they do well what they know how to do well take the focus on what they're good at uh take their mind towards possibilities but their physical health their survival uh getting better because going through covid is not easy it takes a lot out of you so that healing is most important i i i would do that if if this was someone i was working with taking the attention away from training or sports because that should be the last on their mind yeah okay ma'am there is another question uh, which is asking by uh, mr rohit we are talking about professional sports because there is money involved but to what about sports in schools and local streets of india how can we assume that uh, and give confidence to student play like before pre covid time no that in fact to expect them to play like before covid is a wrong expectation you shouldn't be talking like this to those kids and if they ask you just be honest tell them you won't be able to play like how it was before covid either you'll be better or less but we can improve on it if you are lesser than previous we can improve on it you know you can't you can't change everything and you can't keep the skills you have that's why when your children or young people ask you this question take the attention to ask yourself what you can do every day do something every day 
don't think about whether you will go back to your previous level because you will only know after the covid has passed nobody has that answer nobody okay. has that answer okay ma'am uh, the next question is for uh, ashish sir how is technology intervention impacting the sports performances and is this any relevance to psychological performance um uh, talking about like psychological performance everything is interrelated like uh, whatever technology does it's it's not only uh, for like kind of video an analyst or for a trainer it, it's helping everyone especially like you know uh, the the recent technology which uh, is going to be out soon where everyone is going to get benefit like we always discuss uh, me and sanjana that uh, to to create something which is not existing so yeah there there are lot of things like uh, in in technology which is directly impact they have like kind of direct impact on on players performance like uh, whether it's a software whether it's a, it's, it's a hardware so but there, there there needs to be a calculation which like uh, a psychologist uh, herself can tell how uh, technology is going to impact and uh, i guess that day you were discussing about that uh, small equipment uh, sanjana yeah. the hardware so like I, guess, I, i didn't get the question can you repeat the question like the question uh -huh. is basically they want to know uh, the the impact of technology on like uh, psychology basically how oh, how can yes um, i mean there's a positive impact because to know that you have technology that assists you makes you feel more prepared irrespective of whether that technology is actually helping you or not to know that you have something extra than somebody else or you have something cool helping you is something that will give you a lot more confidence a feeling of preparedness now that that is okay if you're using technology for biomechanics for example but let's say you're using technology for psychological aspect right let's say you're using some kind of biofeedback technology to tell you whether you're over aroused under aroused how to manage it it's good to use that to understand your arousal level and when your arousal is more it is good to actually kind of like uh, sorry ashish i think we can see your desktop hmm maybe you want to unshare your screen yeah i'll do that ashish sorry uh so what happens if you depend too much on psychological uh, i mean technology that helps you psychologically for example in one of the webinars i was sharing about this gadget called the m wave e m w a v e so basically the m wave help understand whether there's a coherence between your mind and your feelings because our thoughts impact our feelings and our feelings impact our performance so the m wave let us know whether there's a coherence or not and when there's no coherence perhaps you can close your eyes do your deep breathing or an imagery that's supposed to help you calm down and that the gadget will tell you whether that technique is helping you calm down so it's good to have to know that your mental skill is working for you in adjusting your arousal levels great and then you can use this to practice it but you don't want to depend on it so much that if you don't have it during your competition you feel like you can't manage it so technology is good but becoming too dependent on it we have to be careful especially any gadget that helps you psychologically so we need to be careful about that and Because also going like, comp yeah yeah i will i will add in it like you know uh, what what we have observed uh, like whatever training happens or whatever competition happens so like uh, it, it's not only like the psychologist is only helping uh, during the competition so post training and post events it's not about always sitting with the athletes uh, the, the the psychologists they always work a lot uh, like uh, like as an individual and they they see the footage so many times suppose uh, and 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 an athlete is like kind of having injury a knee injury and the rehabilitation is going on or like whether that athlete has been recovered from that knee injury so you know it's very important for the psychologist along with the trainer and you know the physio to see like uh, whether there is any doubt in the mind of the athlete uh, by like while performing the particular moment where that uh, injured or recovered part is involved so yeah. the psychologist actually reads the mind after watching that footage that oh wait, wait, that, wait. the psychologist will never read the mind it's a myth so no, not read some in the they see the understand the, them 
they they see the footage and they can yeah. they can okay that athlete is scared basically in in yeah. in that particular moment or motion so then yeah. the the job is not only uh, you know limited to working on the field they see a lot of footage and i don't know which software you use for that but uh, our job is to e- equip you know the support staff with all the video footages uh, along with the softwares so that uh, analyze it uh, pretty well sure i agree and you rightly mentioned it has to be a team effort if when you if your athlete is saying you they have been tired and they go to nutritionist and nothing happens it could be that it's mental fatigue so unless the nutritionist gives you some information as a psychologist you won't be able to tell what it is so whoever i work with i work with the entire team of that athlete we have to work together and ashish was right it is not just mental skills training it's so much more beyond that and each of the athletes i'm supporting for 2021 i've been working with them for 2 years or more that's the amount of work it takes for them to inter- internalize those mental skills and depend on them that they will help them when it matters yeah, so it has so, to become habit formation and habit formation takes time yeah correct so basically uh, the the like uh, w- w- what uh, i'm trying to say is Uh, any training session and it's going to be very helpful for the students of amity who who are watching this to understand that the wide scope of you know the like in in helping the athlete basically it's a wide scope basically huge scope in that so one clean footage of an athlete we cut it we crop it and we give it like you know four people one we give it to the psychologist the other we give to the trainer then to the, the physio and then to the doctor so they all you know visualize they they see that and they find out like you know what exactly is good and what is not uh, happening good basically so based on that they evaluate and they work and then they come back next day you know with all the preparations so another question is from the student side uh, that is how can we manage our sports and studies together and be good in both at the same time plus how do we keep ourselves social in this current scenario Mm, I'll answer the social question first. <laughs> Ask yourself, would you like to be infected? Yes. Okay. If you're okay with it, then you should socialize and not come back home maybe because maybe your family does not want to be infected. So being responsible is very important. Okay? That's the first thing. Second, can you be your best in both education and sports certainly? But for example, when you're sitting in your class forget sports live in the moment do as much as you can give your 100% when you're doing sports forget about the class even if you have a homework assignment exam tomorrow don't bother immerse in this activity and let's say you decided to watch netflix forget education forget sports because you're anyways watching netflix make the best of that moment enjoy it so living in the moment is very important if you live in the moment you make the best out of that situation and only when you make the best out of the situation can you grow and become better because if you're not living in the moment you will never know how good you would have been you think you're giving 100% but if you're distracted distraction is distraction mm. you know you know the most important thing uh, like majority of the players in india especially who play tennis they just play tennis uh, 90% of them they play tennis to get a scholarship and to get admission in the one of the best universities in us yeah so yeah. can we can we relate that also like kind of you know uh, they are taking sports as a part to enter the best institution of the yeah, world yeah yeah and there's nothing wrong about it because what happens is the moment you go to us the best sports is in the universities Mm-hmm. and then for students who go from india from any asian setup because asia is a very achieve highly achievement oriented society because we are all about marks and rote learning most of it so this helps you a lot in the us because the level is very low the pressure that is put is and the type of learning is such that it becomes easier for you to understand and the level of training you get in a university in asia in a us could be way better than what you get here mm-hmm. and in most cases let's say 100 uh, young people from india made it to universities in the us trust me only five of them will continue the sport after first year of university they will not participate they will leave yeah so if that is their goal why not 
but irrespective no matter what your motivation is for pe and sports you should be thinking of your life right now you should be thinking of staying fit rather than becoming better in your sport but through staying fit if you can become better it is good so try to keep what you had do a lot of mental rehearsal do a lot of training whatever you can inside the house if opportunity allows but by stepping out and risking yourself the chain won't end unless the infectious chain ends covid won't end just get that straight in your head that chain must end as long as there's still one infected person and this myth about once if you get covid you won't get reinfected that is about to change in the next few months because the mutated strain will be so infectious you might get infected the second time so get this very clear in your head you need to break the chain to break the chain you need to stay away from people the more you stay away the more you suck it up right now the sooner everything will be normal good answer sure and uh, ma'am last question is from a student side is uh, the how can uh, how i can cope with the stress and anxiety and many intrusive thoughts i am experiences because of this pandemic this is from kulkit who is a student of bps uh, second year yeah uh, can you repeat the question again please i'm sorry how 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 i can cope cope up with this uh, stress and anxiety and many intrusive thoughts which i am experiencing because of this pandemic yeah so first of all don't try to avoid those thoughts you know sometimes when thoughts keep coming to our head we, we don't like it and that gives us more stress so let the thoughts come and go you have a schedule now it might be difficult in your situation if you're going through so much to have a schedule for one week or one month have a schedule for the next few hours how you want to spend the next two or three hours write it down and try to follow the schedule the moment you start focusing on what to do and at the end of the day if you see you have achieved so much it will make you feel good happy that's what's important and whatever you write in the schedule maybe everything is not possible it's okay but having a schedule will give you some direction and like i said don't try to actively remove the thoughts or avoid the thoughts let the thoughts come and go our brain is meant to think it will keep thinking it's our choice whether we attend to those thoughts or not if we attend to those thoughts we will react there'll be a response and the response could be positive or negative and in your case certainly it's negative because of the situation so be kind to yourself take care of yourself and make every few minutes now if there's a day when you don't want to do school it's okay binge on netflix <laughs> do something that makes you feel happy but stay away from drugs save stay away from substances because those can also make you happy but the thing is they work on your brain and that's why they make you happy but as much as they make you feel happy they also work on parts of the brain that give you that allow you to think and reason so when you come out of the high of the drugs right then when you come back to reality the problem which was this will suddenly look this big it's the same problem but suddenly it looks big because the faculties of your brain that help you think and reason have also been affected by whatever you sniff or smoke or whatever so basically don't engage in a habit which will become an addiction don't do anything that will control your life yeah. i'm i'm surprised no question has come out like uh, from the students basically how to become a sports psychologist and work in the real field so <laughs> no uh, I, i must tell you ashish there is a boy in yeah. our college uh, yeah. and he is a second year bp student he is also yeah. attending it i think he must be too engrossed to put a question on this but uh, he is very focused on uh, sports psychology and he is very yeah. clear in his uh, objective uh, in uh, right uh, not objective but the goal that he wants to be a sports psychologist only yeah. so i'm sure thank he you. must have listened yeah, and thank you for bringing that up ashish uh, can <laughs> i say something professor kalpana yes, please. please please you now when i started education i was always an average student of fail 
because since young, it was put into my head that by the time you're 18, we'll find this nice boy, get you married, we'll give you all this money and life is set. And I was okay with it. For me, I just needed a car because I didn't use public transport in my life. I wanted a colored TV. We were not allowed to watch TV. And when I was young, there was this Onida, Neighbors and we Owners Pride. I wanted that TV. And I knew, knew my father would give it. And I wanted a husband who would take me around the world because I wanted to travel. So this was my ambition in life. And yes, I loved food. So we had three cooks at home. And I, I used to request my parents, can one of the cook come to my house after I get married? Since young, this was my ambition. But because I was to the suitors, I was not pretty. I was more darker skinned. My marriage didn't happen. And that's how I ended up doing education because my parents felt if she continues education, she's busy doing something good. And that is how I did a master's in psychology because I found that interesting. And then of course, I ran away with my boyfriend. I didn't know I'll fall in love with my classmate. <laughs> And when I ran away, obviously my parents didn't like it. So I was penniless and I had to start working. So you don't have to have a plan all the time. It's good to have, but if you can't think, it's okay. However, whatever opportunity you get, give 100% to it. Because that opportunity will lead you somewhere, which then you'll realize, you know what? This was my calling. This is what I was supposed, this is what I was destined to become. I never ever wanted to do work in my life because I like the very Aramka life. <laughs> and now you cannot I leave work. I love my work now. I but love now, my work now. You cannot leave your work. So, so the question remains the same. What is the success mantra for becoming and like kind of working with the top Olympic athletes in India or outside India? What is the scenario? How good it is as a profession? It is difficult, but... Uh, uh, what is the roadmap kind of a thing for that? The qualification and, you know, the Certainly, contract. it will help you a lot if you have a master's in psychology or at least a basic degree in psychology. Because to have a sound grounding of the theories is important. But uh, I don't know if you're sports psychology students already. It's okay. It's a tough route because sports psychology is applied psychology. When I did sports psychology, I had five years of psychology. So it became so much more easier for me. But to do applied psychology without doing psychology is not very easy. So hats off to you. I wouldn't do what you're doing. Trust me. So you're brilliant. And then just be very honest with yourself. What about sports psychology do you like? So ask yourself questions about what you see about sports. And then keep doing doing some more, some more, but don't stop studying. Don't rush into getting a job as much as possible. And, and get a PhD if you can, because there's more respect for people who have completed their PhD. Now, I attempted PhD in two of the best universities in Singapore. I had a scholarship too, but I had very young children. And for me, my motherhood was most important. So I quit PhD after three quarters, and I don't regret that. But now looking back, I'm telling myself, had I continued my education then when I was younger and completed it? Because again, PhD, not just for the sake of. Do research about something that you're very passionate about. Never do anything for the sake of. Of course, basic degree, you just have to put up with modules you don't like. But put your best foot forward. It will lead you to something magical. And you know, when you're ready, the universe will conspire to bring the right people in your life. Never did I think in 2020, I would be sitting here talking about this. That is how hopeless I was when I stepped into Singapore in 2001. Although I had a master's in clinical psychology and it was four years after I had ran away from home. But I had two children by then already. So I started from zero over here. So whatever opportunity you get, give it your 100%. And that will take you somewhere because, you know, when you're honest, it shows. And you don't have to go behind an opportunity. The opportunity will come knocking. This is what I think based on reflection. I didn't know then that this is what I was doing. But now if I reflect back, that is what I did differently. So, yeah. And never doubt yourself. All of us have something good in us. Yeah, so 
oh my god your students will hate me professor kalpana <laughs> no i don't think so i think uh, we I'm have sorry a... students if i'm not giving five. you the answers you want to listen perhaps <laughs> you want a solution but trust me nobody can give you a solution and you don't want a solution from anyone because that solution won't last long if you figure Absolutely. it yourself that will keep you going uh, sanjana i just want to uh, take a last question before i would like to convey yeah. that the profile of people we have uh, today sure. uh, this question is quite quite interesting and it is from a student how can yeah. i cope uh, with the stress and anxiety and many intrusive thoughts i am experiencing because of the pandemic i think we address that right rahul okay yes ma'am yeah we did okay yeah. so i think we have done that so fine sure. great because i was disconnected in between so i think uh, okay. no problem yeah technology <laughs> yeah okay. see ashish technology huh. you can depend on it entirely huh. thoughts Correct. thoughts we will still have eh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so uh, any other question, uh, Ashish, from your end? We have we are running uh, five minutes now for for the time. I guess it, it was a wonderful session. I guess uh, uh, I was expecting, you know, if I would have been a student, I could have asked Sanjana, you know, how to become a psychologist. But we already discussed that. So like it, it was really a good session. And uh, good thing is we we actually, uh, you know, was discussing like the more. realistic side of psychology rather than kind of hypothetical part of psychology yeah thank yes, you ashish thank you bringing all that up because what books say and what happens in real is very different but you need the books to understand the basics yeah yeah so everything has its own place correct yeah so keeping the fundamentals clear is the first funda i think Very important. <laughs> Basics <laughs> needs to be strong. And then okay. then yeah. build your old buildings after that. Huh? Sure, sure. And <laughs> never imitate another person. Never be, uh, what to say? Never draw motivation from others. You can get inspired, but let the motivation come from within. You need to trust yourself and love yourself enough. Only then people will love you. You need to respect yourself enough. Only then others will respect you. So always remember that. It's never about how much you have. it's about how much you possess in terms of self love and self respect thank you sanjana i think uh, i'll just quickly give you the diversity of the people who who were actually in our audiences today and uh, believe yeah. me uh, i'm so happy uh, because in a very quick or a very short notice people have joined us from i think across the country for sure we have people from jharkhand we have people from bangalore we have people from bangalore uh, hi Hyder- yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah we have from bangalore uh, we have from uh, hyderabad we have from pune and uh, we have from various other universities and apart from these are apart from our own students like okay. uh, we have a lot of students from our own students and uh, we have the state directors of uh, special olympics bharat from jharkhand and also from uh, uh, hyderabad so both of them have joined with their team and they especially asked me that more of more of our uh, participants can join i said wonderful it will be great because it's going to be a, a wonderful session and i'm that's why i took that first question in the initial it, itself because i'm also working a lot with uh, our colleagues who are in hyderabad and jharkhand so it's been an amazing journey with them but uh, believe me these two hours went like th- this i never thought that this will I be i enjoyed like it too <laughs> i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed each word and i yeah. think uh, uh as a teacher if i say not as a director or as a dean or anybody else but as a teacher on one hand and as a student or a listener today on the other hand and if i say so i think it was one of my very very pleasant experience listening to you i think but there's a magic i can say very easily that there's a magic in listening to you and i think uh, it's so easy to absorb each word of yours so Thank i you. think the students would have benefited from you and uh, yes that reminds me we have some uh, sports psychologist uh, who are do- who are from university of delhi who have also joined us today awesome so yeah the so we try to push our uh, webinar also <laughs> so i'm happy <laughs> that uh, 
uh, they have joined with us but uh, since uh, we should be closing it on time so i would suggest yeah. uh, a great thank you to you and thank well, you to us thanks Ashish. for having me lily thank thanks for and, the trust uh, rahul will be taking you to the vote of thanks please rahul sure. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for giving well, me this opportunity to take uh, uh, to give the th vote of thanks. Uh, so I will extend my hearty thanks to management of Amity University to provide us the opportunity to host the this international webinar on a psychological analysis of a sports performance a post COVID scenario. I, on behalf of Amity uh, School of Physical Education and Sports Sciences. and the entire it support team even a special guest in the audience let me call it fraternity of physical education and sports sciences here together and on my own behalf extended a very hearty word of thanks to all speakers for gracing your important work and sharing with us your findings and opinions today a big thank you to professor dr kalpana sharma ma'am for her efforts towards to make us understand the psychological analysis of a sports performance by arranging this uh, wonderful a webinar to us and thank you so much ma'am for this efforts i must mention our deep sense of appreciation to ms sanjana kiran ma'am for sharing her valuable ideas and thoughts and experiences in reference to psychological analysis on a sports performance uh, post covid scenario thank you so much ma'am for sharing your point of view and research with us That's we welcome. also wish uh, thank you so much ma'am Uh, we also wish to express our gratitude to mr ashish bahadur sir for providing encouragement as exp uh, as express their view on nitty gritty of sports and the structure of sports in uh, present scenario thank you thank you sir for sharing your okay. wonderful experience and your research work uh, and all of your experience with us we all are uh, very grateful to you finally i would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to sodi sir and his team especially rahul suri sir for the perfect logic support and guidance he has extended to all of us at this wonderful evening i cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to take on the completion of task beyond their comfort zone at last once again i want to state that uh, we are almost grateful to all speaker and you to make this event successful we thank you for being with us this evening it has been a great pleasure thank you very much thank, thank you so you. much thank you so thank much you. and all the very best stay safe thank you thank you thank you, thank so you very much. very much i'll leave Bye -bye. now thank you thank you thank you thank you ashish